So we are back with another podcast episode of Behind the Host. Uh, today we're joined by Rose Tipka. She's the CEO and founder of Your Family's Place. Her and her husband Brian own two properties in I Idaho in America. They in specialize Ohio. Ohio, sorry, yeah. <laughs> um, specialize in large sized homes accommodating a big group of people 14 to 20 and really focus on multi-generational families uh, coming to stay with them so i'm really excited to dive into this niche especially today because since the pandemic we're seeing a lot more people travel in multi-generational families they're going away with grandma and granddad and uh, you know bring in the, the family dog and everybody along with them so look forward to uh, to diving in this to this today rose just before yeah. we do um i just want to give a quick shout out uh there's a few people in the hospitality community and every wednesday we talk about the wins that people have had uh jane poly polizimo uh has had a win today where she has she's actually staying away at the moment and she's managed to get a direct book and while she's abroad so it's great to to see these wins and if anybody listening hasn't already please go and join the hospitality community and come and share your wins on every every wednesday with us um that'd be fantastic to see so rose welcome yeah. along thank, thank you for, you. for joining for us today <laughs> so let's get started with the name of your business your family's place how did yeah. how did that happen so um, I actually was listening to a podcast, one of the Bruce Lee podcasts, and Mark was talking about his communication strategy for when his guests check out. And he was saying that he sends a text message or WhatsApp message to his guests after they check out saying that I want to be your family's go-to place for vacation. Um, and so we have an idiom, like when you go on vacation, you know, where are you going? I'm going to my family's place at the beach. I'm going to my family's place in the lake. You know, I'm going to my family's place up north. Um, and so when I heard that, I knew that that was, a, that was a golden nugget for me and that I wanted our properties to be other people's family's place to go to. And so that was really the idea behind the naming of it, your family's place, because we want to be your family's place and we want to welcome those families like it's their own home so that they enjoy their time and hopefully come back year after year. So that was really, once we heard that phrase, we knew it was working for our company and our brand and everything was just coming together at the right time. Hey, Mark's going to be really pleased that one of his podcasts has inspired a business yes. name. So yes. uh, yeah, we'll definitely, yes. um, I'll mention that to him straight afterwards if he's not already watching live. So what gave you the, um, the idea, your two places mm -hmm. that you've got there, what really set it off to host big groups instead of going for, for small yeah. groups and that side of things? Um, so we have a big family ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. We have six kids, um, they're all younger, and we have a dog. And so when we travel, we always had a hard time finding a place to stay. And oftentimes when we travel, we wanna go with my parents, we wanna go with my sister and her family, and just finding a big enough home for 14 people and two dogs, it was just, it was next to impossible. And so we felt if it was a problem for us, that it would be a problem for other people too. Um, and so that was the kind of our starting point. We also looked at the market around us in our area and there is a lot of smaller sized cabins and tiny homes and stuff like that, that sleep two people, four people, there's loads of those. But when it comes to large size homes and especially pet friendly ones, there's hardly any. And I'd rather be in that space than in the much more crowded, smaller space. Um, that way I can differentiate myself. I have a different type of clientele. If I'm hosting more than one family at a time, that's let's say three contacts per rental as opposed to just one. So initially it was, we need something for our own family. And also it was a better opportunity for us because there were fewer other houses in that space. I love that. So it's really inspired. You understand the space and, and what you need when you're yes. going away as a family and therefore you'll be able to help, you know, other families in the same situation. How important has it been for your business to really dive down into that niche? Uh, and have you seen since the pandemic a huge uptake of, of accommodation? Yeah, so we had our first large property before the pandemic. We opened that one in uh, 2018 and it 
took off rather quickly um, because there just weren't other houses like that in our area. Um, and so then when the pandemic kind of hit, it was, it was a scary time. <laughs> there were a couple of weeks where uh, things were closed down and a lot of people canceled. And there was, there was a lot of terror because we were pretty heavily invested in our business at that point. Um, but after a few weeks, um, we started getting messages, you know, are you open? Can we come stay? Um, and it, it took off because we were in the right location. Um, we had the right type of property being on a large acreage, being in a rural location, um, and just geographically, we're really well positioned and we pull from a lot of large metropolitan areas. So we were in um, like a, I call it a Goldilocks spot. We are two hours from Cleveland, less than, less than that for Akron and Canton, two hours from Columbus, two hours from Pittsburgh, um, a little closer to three hours to Cincinnati. So in all of those metropolitan areas, um, there's 10.3 million people. And we're less than three hours away and very easily accessible from the highway or the motorway. Um, when people actually get off the highway, it's no more than an eight minute drive and two turns to get to our property. So we were in this sweet spot for a large group of people um, to be able to get away in a rural location that was still very accessible and they could still have that getaway and feel comfortable and safe. And did you notice that more people would come from the local cities after the pandemic, that they travel a little less far? Yeah. So a lot of times people will you know, spend their summer vacation and go down to like the Outer Banks or, or Hilton Head and stuff like that. Um, and we saw people being a little less hesitant to travel that far. And we're also seeing that with the increasing gas prices is maybe they don't want to drive down to Florida for their summer vacation. And then they find that they can have an accommodation closer to home. It's much more convenient for them to get to. And you know, price wise, we're more affordable than going to these huge beach houses and you have significantly more privacy. And for them, that was, that was just a win because it was more affordable. It was easier to get to and they had more space. And what, what can people expect, families who come along, what, what kind of activities and what is the area like uh, when they're yeah. staying? So um, our county, it's, it's, it's adorable. <laughs> um, so our county um, is semi-rural, although we have some large, larger sized cities. Um, and it is more of a farming community. We're closer to Ohio Amish country. And so there's that whole tourist attraction of people that want to come see what Amish country is like. Um, but our properties themselves are very focused on this concept of uh, an open and go vacation. Um, so when you're packing for your family and you have all these kids and you have your pet and you have your parents coming, you're wondering what, what all you need to put in the car. Um, one of our goals is that the only thing our guests need to bring are their clothes, including their swimsuits, and their food, or we offer a number of fill the fridge packages from a local farmer's market. Um, and so that's all that they need to bring to show up and have fun at our properties. So at our cottage at Maple Pond, that's on a private lake. Um, so we already have life jackets, all different sizes. We have canoes, we have kayaks, we have stand up paddle boards. We have a floating oasis, it's a big mat that goes in the water. So people don't necessarily have their own kayaks and I wouldn't buy a kayak just for me to take on vacation. We have all those stuff ready to go for the guests so that they can enjoy it. And it's, it's open and go. Um, all of our properties also have game rooms. Uh, so we have um, Playstations and Nintendos and arcades, air hockey tables. Um, we have a basketball shooting machine, uh, ski ball, um, hot tubs. Hot tubs are just, they're just big. People love hot tubs. And so we try to put everything in the property that our guests can use and can enjoy so that if they don't want to leave, they don't have to, and there's still plenty for them to do. It's great to have all those amenities and it really speaks. I mean, even I've got a big family myself, so it speaks to me thinking, oh, that would be awesome to, to go there yeah. and uh, to experience some of this. So there'll be people listening to this podcast at the moment who have either got large properties themselves or have, you know, potentially investment into a large property and be yeah. thinking about 
doing something similar. What tips would you have for those people if they're now looking to get into this sort of space? Mm -hmm. um, well, I think you need to you need to focus on who your guest is going to be. Um, so you guys would call them a customer avatar. Often we call them ideal guests. Um, who, who are those people going to be? Because if you're outfitting a house for a family group or you're outfitting a house for um, a bachelor or a bachelorette party, that might be different. And that goes into the design of the house. It goes into the amenities of the house. It also goes into the photography and the copy that you're producing. Um, one of the investments that we made early on was hiring a professional copywriter. Um, her name is Kelly Rye. She's amazing. Um, and she was such a great listener, um, hearing about our business, what our goals were going forward. She also interviewed our past guests to you know, just get more information from them about why they were choosing our properties. And then she took that information and she wrote the most amazing copy that tells guests who are looking at our website what their experience is, who we're going for, and why we appeal to them. And so a lot of times when you're thinking about big properties, people are very worried about parties, and that's a completely legitimate concern. But one of the best things that you can do is create a beautiful property, um, create beautiful content, not just your listing pictures, but you know, having Facebook page, Instagram page, that kind of stuff, creating consistent, beautiful, high quality content. And then you have that copy that is very clear on, this is my ideal guest. This is my customer avatar. These are the people that we're appealing to. And you create that beautiful experience, you will attract the right guests to your property. I love that. And for anybody listening, I mean, one of the most important things there, and we were speaking to people within the Boostly Academy the other day who shared their Airbnb listings. Mm -hmm. And we looked at the, the first thing I look at, like you say, is the, the guest reviews to be able to yeah. see what they're saying about the property and what they're saying about the property and their, their experience of, of staying within the home. That is the key stuff to get within your, your copy at the start, because when you understand what they're taking away from the experience, that's exactly when somebody first lands on your property and reads the description. That's the sort of things that, that we should be talking about and something that we can all action. And if you do decide to uh, hire a copywriter, then it really, you know, they do that well. And, and it's so important to, to get professionals if, you know, budget allows to, to do this sort of thing. Yeah. So let's talk more about where you market your properties at the moment. Whereabouts, how, how do you get your guests? Um, so we have had sort of a journey to where we are today because things are always changing. Um, when we first opened up, we only had one smaller size property that was on our private lake. And um, we actually did not have a plan at all to get into this business. Um, it was a surprise to me. Um, when my husband bought the property, I was, it was actually two days before I gave birth to our fifth child. Um, and thinking about starting a new endeavor was it was beyond the last thing on my mind. <laughs> um, so, but my husband, he saw a career change coming on his horizon, the company that he was working for, the owners were retiring. And, and so he was trying to figure out what his next act was going to be. And for some reason he was pulled to this property. Um, it was also during a time where the real estate market was flat. It was not going anywhere. And this particular property had been on the market for over a year and had eventually gone to auction. So when we first got started, I just had baby number five. Um, and I'm like, well, what do we do with this? I don't know. Um, let's just, we'll just put it on Verbo and we'll just put it on Airbnb and just see what happens. I don't know if anyone's even gonna show up. Um, within a few months, we had a strong preference. Um, I felt the user experience on Airbnb and the quality of the guests that they were sending to us, it wasn't, um, is high. It wasn't across the board, but just in general, the quality of the guests and the user experience on their platform wasn't as good. And so we focused more on bringing people in from Verbo. Um, when we opened our second large property, we only listed on Verbo and we filled our property just fine. At that point, we dropped Airbnb. So when we finished construction on our big um, cottage at Maple Pond, that was when we really launched into um, a book direct initiative. Um, we were a big company. We had a beautiful big houses. We had very full calendars. It was time to start converting those people into direct bookings. 
Um, and so that's the phase that we're at right now. We do still get um, some reservations from Verbo and, and that's great. It's been a good opportunity for us, but we are at a pivot point in our company where we are shifting to more direct bookings. That's cool. And I know a lot of the time people think of uh, Boostly as direct bookings mainly, but we, we always say find the online travel agents that work for you, mm -hmm. you know, for your guest avatar, but also get them to work for you. So you're using them like a shop window. Yes. They spend millions on advertising. Yes, uh, they have a know. much bigger advertising budget than I do. Completely, completely. They, they, and they always... also do give you some social credibility. A lot of people will start their vacation search on the OTAs. And if you're on there and you're easy to find, you know, booking directly, you just, you gain that credibility that you are a legit property, you are who you say you are, because there are some properties out there that aren't. Yeah. Um, and customers and guests do have a um, certain right to be skeptical. And so the, uh, the OTAs do help give you some legitimacy, but then hopefully you can direct them towards your uh, your own book direct website. And speaking of your own book direct website, so how long have you had a direct book and website and how have you found that's helped your business? Um, so we've had our book direct website for about nine months. Um, I think it's, it helps us be more professional. Um, when I'm sharing our website, um, I'm sharing a direct website to us. I'm not sharing a verbal listing. Mm -hmm. um, it make, it's, makes us much more professional and we view it more as a, a real legitimate business as opposed to just a hobby. Um, there are lots of people who get into this space for lots of different reasons. Um, some people, they enjoy the process of renovating houses and hosting people, and, and that's great. And people do it for lots of different reasons. We aren't, we aren't hobbyists though. This is what we do full time. And having that book direct professional website is just critical to being legitimate in what we do. And for anybody listening, if you do want to go and check out uh, the, the website, it's www.yourfamilysplace. Very easy to remember. Very easy yes. to remember. Yes. And uh, you did mention before the call, obviously we've speaking, yeah, you're about to have that, uh, you're, you're getting Boostly to, to redo the website as well. So look yes. forward to, to seeing yeah. the new website. There's, there's a lot that you are learning as you are starting a business and growing a business. And there are things that we are all skilled at. Um, and when I originally built our website, I used our PMS to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but I also want, I want like a, a really nice website. I want a completely perfect, professional, sleek website. And I have to be honest with myself and that's beyond my technical skills. So that's one of the cases where I need to hire a professional to do it. Um, you know, I could write copy, but I can't write it as well as a professional writer. I can take pictures, but I can't do it as well as my professional photography friends. And so there is a certain amount of understanding of what you can do and what you should hire a professional for. It's such an important point that because so many of us as hosts, there's so many different jobs to, mm -hmm. to, to tend to and to mm -hmm. hire and outsource tasks, which can either be done better or faster um you know budget allowing then that is definitely worth doing because there's always a cost that so many people try and take on these tasks themselves and the cost is less in terms of, of monetary but in terms of the time you lose so much more time and of course in in our kind of trade summer season is upon us it's really important to get oh yes <laughs> it's really important to capitalize on that so let's talk a little bit more about the tech within your business what yes. tech do you use and what have you found to be the most helpful Okay, um, so our property management system, our PMS is owner res, and um, I did do the onboarding process on that. They offer a, uh, a concierge type of onboarding process, and that was completely worth it to me. Again, that goes to, you know, how do I get this done uh, the best way, the most efficiently, and that was worth the investment to have them help me set it up. I already had copy. I already had professional photography. I already had email templates. I had all that stuff ready to go. Um, so we use owner res for that. Um, we use beyond pricing for our dynamic pricing. Um, my husband does all of our accounting using QuickBooks online, which is really great. Um, but I know there's a big focus on technology in this space, but I also want to make sure that people think about technology beyond just like the apps and the tools that you use, but also the people that you work with. Um, 
because um, well, your owner res is great, but I need to have beautiful photography. Um, I need to have you know great video content. I need to have connections in my local community because you can have all the tech in the world, but who are you working with? Who is your network of people that's helping you? So um, we have a, a wonderful photographer. Her name is Naomi Benson. She's actually from Wales. Um, she made it to Ohio somehow. <laughs> um, she does a lot of our lifestyle photography and our videography. Um, and then she said, you know, I do really great weddings and lifestyle photography, but I'm not a real estate photographer. You need to talk to my buddy Carson. And so I called Carson. I said, Carson, I, I need some real estate photography. And he just took the most luscious pictures of our, um, of our Mount Pleasant Lodge and um, we're getting fresh pictures at the cottage. So having those connections to other people in your community, um, I think it's almost as important, if not more important than the technology that you're using. Good people around us is, is just so important. And yes. uh, I really like that point. So has there been any sort of conceptions or, or any thoughts which when you originally got into this business and uh, well done for, for getting into it just after the, the fifth child, um, yes. you know, yeah. at, at any stage, you know, this business keeps you busy, but I imagine for yourself, that kept you really busy with, with family life and everything yes. as well. Yeah. So has there been any sort of thoughts or any views that has changed since you launched your business um, yeah. that's changed over time? Um, well, there's a couple of things that have changed about the way we think about the business. Um, when we first started off, um, we didn't really know what we were doing. <laughs> and we thought that our place was special, but we weren't even sure if anybody was really going to come. Um, one of the things that we were concerned, we weren't sure if people would see in our properties what we saw in them. Um, and so how we communicate to the guests and, and you know, were they, were they going to view them as, as special as we thought they were? Um, one of the biggest hurdles, I think, is finding the best way to communicate with your guests, um, whether it's through the OTAs or if you're texting or, or calling them, and what's the right way to communicate, because you always hear, um, you hear stories about people who are communicating in different ways, and then they feel um, undercut by the OTAs or by the guests. So finding your voice and your communication strategy was something that I was uncertain about. And I've gone through many different, um, different iterations of my communication strategy. And I've landed on one that I feel really works well for us. Um, but it's not, it's not a dead document. It's something that I keep referring back to and keep changing and tweaking the different messaging. Um, so figuring out how to communicate with guests was certainly a, a scary thing in the beginning. Um, I was also worried about the quality of guests. We are investing a lot of our time and our resources into these properties. And what quality of guests are we going to be getting? Um, that's always a concern. One of the things that um, has been sort of a cornerstone of our communication strategy is treating everybody with unconditional positive regard. Um, is, you know, assuming people are, are coming from a good place and remembering that at the end of the day, we are in the hospitality business and it is our job to be hospitable. And you know, the vast majority of our guests are amazing. And when you treat people with that unconditional positive regard, you have good outcomes. It's so, such a good point that because most times when people set out to get into this business, they search on, on Facebook and there's so many, the, the, oh, there's the worst stories yeah. on social media, yeah. isn't there about this? And, the, the thing is 99.9% .9 of guests are absolutely lovely. They treat your yes. home with respect and, and they really come here to, to enjoy the place and to create great memories. Um, often as, as humans, we focus on the very small percentage of, of problems, um, you know, beforehand. So it's, it's great. I really like what you've said there about really treating them positively and letting go of any preconceptions of, of people is, is so important to do so. And, uh, I'm sure have you had any any guests which haven't looked after the place or anything like that or has it all been yeah we have not we've not really had any big disasters we've had people that have left it more messy than i would have liked mm -hmm. um especially when you have hot tubs it's always you never know what you're gonna get um and there are certain you know groups of people that tend to be harder on hot tubs than others mm -hmm. um but we have not had an experience where we walked in and the entire place was trashed yeah. um 
And that you have to make that investment on the front end on quality product, quality content. Um, and so you're attracting the right people. Um, certainly there's been messy houses. It's, um, one, of the, it's but, one of the things I know when people are listening to this, as soon as they hear big groups, they'll be thinking, you know, parties yes. and, and big groups, something. big problems. Mm. That's uh, somebody told me that very early on, big groups, big problems. I, I think it's a big opportunity and it's in your perspective. And again, front loading all of that work at the beginning of it. So you're attracting the right people. And when you get those people, you treat them well. There's a saying which says some people can see the problems in every opportunity, whereas entrepreneurs see the opportunity in every problem, which is, yes. is what you've done there. So you mentioned briefly uh, that you have some uh, sort of communication documents that you refer yes. to. As you've been hosting, many people listening to this will have just started hosting and won't necessarily have any uh, standing operating procedures or, or anything like that. How have you found that having uh, documents and procedures has, has helped your business? Okay, so so for our business, first of all, it's just my husband and I. We don't have a huge team of people behind us. We do have some folks that do help us with the cleaning, but we are on site for every single turnover. It's just the two of us. And so we have to wear many different hats. And one of the things that I did that has been really helpful for us organizing, and I'm going to show it to you, and I sent you a link to this. I'm not sure if you can put a link to this in the show notes. Um, but I have an organizational chart and hopefully you can get a link to this in the show notes. And what I did was I made all of the different types of categories of work. So we have things like marketing, um, housekeeping and maintenance, guest services, IT, and then business financial. And then I list all of the jobs underneath those things. Um, and when something new comes up, I add it in there. Like it, this document can change and it does change frequently. But just having a list of these different categories helps me be more organized and strategic in my thinking. Now, when it comes to marketing, that's me. When it's housekeeping and maintenance, that's also me. Um, who does the guest services? That's me too. Um, I do the IT. That's me. And so I am all of these things. But thinking strategically about the different categories, sometimes I'll, I'll think like if I was a business with 100 employees, what would be my department? Mm -hmm. And so I think about that in those terms. Mm -hmm. And so in the future, um, if we needed to you know, bring some more people in for housekeeping and maintenance, I know what those jobs are. So you take the time, write it down. Um, I have some of these in a spreadsheet, do whatever works for you but write it down and then go back to it as things change. Just because you wrote something down doesn't mean that it's set in stone and you can change those things. Um, from an organizational perspective, it, it makes you much more efficient. I completely agree. And just having those, those documents or to those tasks written down, it's very easy then to decide which tasks either are the ones taking up too much of your time, which you may decide to outsource or which ones uh, you just don't like doing because as hosts we have to do the we have to wear these different hats and there's some Lots jobs which we like there's some jobs which we don't like and being able to have that listed down somewhere where you can outsource it instead of it all just being in our own heads is is, yeah. is a great little tip there for people listening so yeah. that that is is really amazing and uh one of the things that you mentioned uh because we spoke just before we went live on here was that you're not looking to scale and when when it comes down to it, a lot of people listening and, and and you mentioned this will be thinking well you know do i need all this stuff if i'm not necessarily looking to scale to 20 properties what, what would be your advice yeah. to them so i know that this can be an unpopular opinion in the industry and and that's that's okay with me um i'm getting into this business i am in this business because first of all, I find the work fulfilling. I enjoy doing it, but I have six young kids and lifestyle is important to me. And where I choose to spend my time right now is one of the most important decisions that I make every day. Um, so oftentimes when you're learning about the industry, you're learning about other people who are very successful and they're always talking about scaling. How do I get bigger? How do I add more doors? I want to have 30 doors, the new doors this year. 
And you know what? There, there's no shame in that game. And if that's what you want and those are the goals that are driving you, then you should do it. But it doesn't have to be that way. Um, we have two properties now. We are in construction on our third. And those three properties um, do just fine supporting our family in uh, you know, a comfortable lifestyle, but it also gives us the freedom to spend our time in the way that we want. I can always work more in the future when my kids are older, but right now um, maintaining that lifestyle balance is very important and it's also completely legitimate. You don't have to start out and then grow exponentially. Growth at any cost is not, is not worth it. You have to focus on what your, what your goals are. And that's the amazing thing about hospitality is that you can really make your business your, your own and either have that lifestyle business, you can scale. There's, there's just so many opportunities and there's not many other industries which are that flexible, you know, to, to be able to, yeah. to do that. And especially to go from little or no experience to be able to go into the industry and, and make a success of it as, as you have done, which is, is amazing. And, uh, I've really enjoyed, you know, getting to know your business. The the key mm -hmm. takeaways, certainly for, for people who are listening, that tip about the copywriting, about looking at your reviews, getting professional people in, and also just making the space really appeal to your, your guest avatar. These big groups love the the, the yes. fun, the games, the the kayaks and all of that side. Oh, of yes. Yeah, it's amazing. So what we like to do, Rose, is as we end uh, these, we like to just do a couple of quick fire questions. Okay. Um, so these are just a bit of fun, but um, okay. yeah, just a nice way to end. So would you rather be able to speak to animals or know every language in the world? Uh, I'd rather speak to animals because I really wish I knew what my dog was thinking. <laughs> really. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know that question was almost if you know? Are you a dog or a cat person? But I think I I, I read. I am a dog. We do have three cats. Um, oh. but I am definitely a dog person. And Mr. Velvet, he is our dog. He's down at my feet, right down here. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's just hope that nobody comes to make a delivery while we're talking. <laughs> the whole world yeah. will hear him. But um, he does have his own videos, and he's featured in a lot of our content. He's very handsome. I'll, uh, we'll check him out on the website. And on He's the a good boy. <laughs> so, uh, what what is your favorite beverage? Oh wow, that's a good question. Um, so I I drink a lot of water because um, uh, it's hot here in the summer. Um, I think if I was super thirsty, I just don't think that you can beat a really ice cold lemonade. Nice. Um, I, nothing hits the spot like a a really tart and sweet lemonade, nice and, and cold. I don't know if obviously people listening on the podcast won't know this, but Rose is sitting in the background. You've got an awesome I do. Uh, fireplace. And are they lemons on the... Those are lemons, yes. Yeah, awesome. It's my summer vibe, yeah. <laughs> nice, yep. very nice. Um, and the last question, who inspires you? Oh, that's a really great question. Um, well, I think that there are a lot of... There's a lot of people um, in the creative space that have super niche ideas. Um, that on the face of them, you wouldn't think were that interesting. Um, well, like the ladies at Home Edit, like they're really passionate about pantry organization and how they do it. And that is super niche, but they're passionate about it. They put it out in the world and people are like, yeah, that's really awesome. And I think that that kind of, um, that kind of dedication to your passion is something to admire. Um, like um, there's a design company um, and they also have a, a TV show on Netflix and I wish I could remember what their name is. Uh, um, uh, Studio McGee. Um, she has a very clear vision of home decor and home design um, and she's passionate about it and she puts it out in the world. And when you're passionate about it, people pick up on that. And that's been very successful for them. So I think those kinds of companies that we might look at them as being super niche, but their owners, their founders are really passionate about it and they put it out in the world and people go, yeah, that is, that is really cool. I think those kinds of um, people, those kinds of ideas um, are really interesting and very inspiring. Definitely inspiring. And one of the quotes that uh, you've reminded me of is always have a niche, which is an inch wide, but a mile deep. And you'll find yeah. people will, will, will come to you and, and share that, that vibe and the, the interest of it. So 
Yes. Uh, that's a really great way to to sort of wrap this up, Rose. And mm -hmm. if people wanted to get in touch with you or come and check out your business, what's the best way to do so? Sure, we have uh, both Facebook and Instagram page. It's at your family's place. Very easy to remember. Um, you, our website is www.yourfamilysplace.com. Very easy to remember. And if you want to email me, it's rose at yourfamilysplace.com. Brilliant. I'm sure you're going to have a lot of people get in touch with you. And uh, Absolutely. thank you so much for, for joining us today on the Behind the Host podcast. And uh, yeah, if there's, uh, you know, sort of anybody else who's listening, who wants to be on the podcast, who's got a hosting business where you specialize in a niche or, or you want to come on, feel free to reach out to us here at Boostly. Um, as I say, don't forget to come and join our communities, which is the hospitality community on Facebook. If you do want to know any more about our website designs and uh, our training, then you can get in touch with us as well on the socials, just at Boostly. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, Rose, for, for joining okay. us today. Did you have any uh, closing comments or? or uh, you know, if you have, if you're in the States, if you're in the Midwest and you're looking for a place for your family, my family's place can be your family's place. Um, if you know somebody in the States that's looking for a place, a personal reference is the best advertising that money can't buy. Um, so please uh, check us out, check our Facebook page, um, check our Instagram feed, send me an email. If you have any ideas or want to work together, uh, reach out. I love to collaborate with lots of different creatives. So send me a message. We'll make things happen. Thank you so much, Rose. Uh, thanks for coming on today. And uh, Thank you. bye for now. Bye. Having a blast, gonna get it on the Bruce Lee podcast. Bruce Lee like Bruce Lee, cause it's so hard and the tea is loose leaf. Making up those rhymes, don't write it, just do it loosely.